Today on Uncommonly Good MTG, we were playing a Phyrexian Tribal deck. But uh, we played Phyrexian Tribal in the past. It was a great deck. This one's a little bit different. Why is that? Because this one has Roaming Throne in it to duplicate all the effects of all the Phyrexians out there. And what else does it have? It's got Phyrexian Obliterator and a bunch of fight cards. So mixing those three things together, this deck should be incredible. If that sounds interesting to you, then stay tuned. Soon to find out more. Hello and welcome to Uncommonly Good MTG. I am your host, and despite rumors to the contrary, I had nothing to do with the collapse of the Chuck E. Cheese Pizza Empire. Dr. Yukon Suckett! Yes, thank you! Film before a live studio audience. Thank you so much! Yukon Suckett! Word to your mama. So I'm broadcasting to you today from my secret underground headquarters, and I'm bringing to a deck I found over on the Aether Hub, entitled Golgari by mtga assistant meta so i don't know somebody somebody played it somebody did very well with it and uh the mtga assistant meta is taking credit for it and posted it up so i'm stealing it tonight and we are going to be playing it uh so what do we got going on today well it's not just golgari it's phyrexian tribal and i love a good tribal deck and i love phyrexian tribal that thing is powerful as all heck now this one's different than the ones we played before in two ways number one we got Roaming Throne this time. Roaming Throne. Roaming Throne loves a good tribal deck. And man, it's going to be good. Number two, we actually have the Obliterator and a bunch of fight spells in here. So we got Phyrexian doing Phyrexian crap. We got Roaming Throne du duplicating all that Phyrexian crap. And we got Obliterator causing them to sacrifice stuff equal to the amount of damage that they deal to the Obliterator. And if we happen to have the Roaming Throne out, doubling it that's just going to be insane insane asaurus rex even all right so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the card super quick and then we'll go talk a little bit how the deck should work which we kind of already done and then we'll go out and we'll crush some hopes and dreams all right what do we got we got uh fight card look for some land fight card we got protect your creature with hexproof and indestructible you gain two life this guy is a mana guy this guy will draw you cards. This person has first strike and death touch and a Swiss army knife of other abilities. Uh, Shouldered would grind people down as well as pushing you up. That's tempo, baby. Obliterator is a booby trap waiting to happen. However much the damage is dealt to it, that a source controller has to sacrifice that many permanents. Nuts. Roaming Throne then duplicates whatever. If a triggered ability of another Phyrexian triggers, it triggers an additional time. We got Glissa, the Herald of Perdition, who puts out uh, pod bebes, at which point then you can transform them and give all your Phyrexians potentially first strike and death touch. Any one of those things you could do at the beginning of your combat. All right, lastly, we got Virtue of Persistence, which kills a creature, you know, three toughness or less. Uh, and you can, if you got seven, you can put it out and start ripping things out of graveyards, putting them back into play. Over in the mana thing, I just want to point out Seed Core is good for any color, for any Phyrexian you want to do. We got tons of that. You pick Phyrexian for Cavern or Souls, so any color from that. We got a bunch of dual lands. We got one that gets rid of enchantments, artifacts, or non-basic lands. And we got ones return creatures from the graveyard back to your hand. All right, so we got a bunch of great stuff. As you can see, the, the combo here is Phyrexian Obliterator and any of your fight spells roaming throne in any of your phyrexians and then we just have massive nastiness for anybody that wants to tangle with us all right so let's get out there and do some damage but before we do this we do as we every let's do as we do every night let's say our prayers and talk about what is best in life hands together dear black king toxrel who dwells within the dark chambers of my heart can you please hear my prayers and grant your blessings as we attempt to crush our enemies see them driven before us and to hear the lamentations of the women all right we're playing against ryan Ick us ryan nickus ryan nickus all right 
keep. You can play that anytime. We were about getting countered, possibly. We'll see what he plays. It's the Ice Queen. There's a boy monster. Hey there, Hooties. Good to see you. I know you are a very cheerful bird. Good to see you, Hoots. Hoots McKenzie. All right, we need another black mana beyond the Cavernous Souls we currently have. I'm going to have to eat that. Let's just go ahead and do a Phyrexian. And then let's uh, Tail Swipe here. And we are... Let's go for it. We got to get some damage in there. Come on, black mana. Ah, good enough. Bushwhack can do a lot of stuff there. Uh, basic land card. It's exactly what I need. Black. Of course, he could just uh, exile the obliterators here in a bit. Do some ossifications or something. I bet you we'll see some of that happen. I'll tell you, we'll start off with Shouldred. If he's going to take anybody out, he'll start taking out Glisses too. We got we got backup glisses. Mmm, we're all being thrown out. I'm gonna go for shoulders to start off with. Smite! Hey, draw that card. Draw that card. Transformers. All right, let's see what he's got going on here. Ah, uh, if I take out, let's just say no. We'll let Shoulder of the Apocalypse live. You can always kill her, and I don't particularly care for that. Roaming Throne's going to do very well with Shouldered. So I'm worried about him ossifying or doing some sort of exile. All right, man, you seem to be stalling. You have five cards in your hand and a whole stack of mana. All right, let's send in the big boy. You just ignore it. You gotta. I mean, it's gonna deal twice as much damage back to you is the problem. There we go. Shoulders got double time going on now. Ah, oh, man. The question is, is it shy? He's not gonna wipe the board. There we go. All right, there you go. Just lose it, man. I'm kind of committed at this point, though. Yeah, so is he. There we go. And now you got to start sacrificing crap.
Sacrifice, sacrifice crap, baby. But you're giving up. Is that it? Oh, ho, ho, ho. All right, I'm just keeping it back. I just don't trust against the lack of board wipes here. Ah, uh, should we target enchantment? There we go. And we win. And we win. Man, that was a blowout. Victory! All right, up and against RGH, Ruth Gator Habsburg. All right, the seed core. No. Yeah, so the deal is, is that what are we doing here? It's just two, three, four. And is he just playing mono red? All right, so we can get out roaming prone on our next turn if we wanted to. Question is, do we want to block? I'm not blocking that. All right, we're going to get out the roaming throne. No, he's just going to town. All right, so now I believe our mana producer will produce twice as much mana, which is good. He's got ward on him. This is ward, just two. Ah, uh, he could shoot it. Is that that big of a deal, though? Let's just let's do it. This is block. There we go. Pay the extra. All right, Praetor. All right, I can't table. Let's just uh, put another one of these guys out. All right, it's a lot of mana. Now we just gotta get to our big boys. Where are they at? I believe Gix will help out with that. He's just flooring it. And what do we got here? Something good. Let's see. Get in combat shoes, incubate, turn all incubators. Control Frexians have first strike and death touch till the end of turn. All right, gone. What do I got going up here? Nothing. So let's just incubate twice. All in. Lose a life. Gain a card. We'll do that. I don't have any mana. We got one guy. You know, you have to use Mistress Foundry. I don't know if you remember he still has that guy up there. There you go.
All right, we're down to four. Ah, uh, let's pop this guy for two. Let's pop this guy for two. You know the tail swipe. All right, so we can't do anything about flying McGee up there. I'm at three. He could always shoot me. We got two guys pounding it out. Let's just send in what we got. Uh, oh, I could have just transformed everything. All right, we're down to seven. We got some blockers. No. Once again, we're right. We're right in the bleeding edge here against Mono Red. There you go. You got me down too. Congratulations. We're gonna pop this out. I uh, second. All right, anyways, we can pop, what is it, by uh, two something? Is that enough? Do I need to worry about it? I don't have to worry about it. It's an instant. I could do it anytime I want. Three, six, I got plenty there. No reason. And we win. Negative seven in your face, Mono Red. In your face. All right, we're playing against K. Ross. Lots of black. That's good. A little bit of green that we have. We got what we need. Nice to have green that didn't cost me life, though. And we're not, we're not going to bushwhack. We gotta get some creatures out so we can start laying down the smack. That's not happening quick enough though, is it? There we go. Out of pay! Alright, these guys have Ward 1. That's not bad. Tail Swipe can handle all of that. Ossification, of course you got Ossification. Alright, two. Let's get a little shouldered action there. I'll pay you that for a dollar. I'll buy that for a dollar. That's how it goes. All right, there you go. All right, if I go again, I uh, will. He'll die. So let's just put out a chump. And no tax. We're cool. Do your thing, Shouldred. He gets another. Is he just roaming this thing down? All right, there we go. Now right, we're down to five.
Uh, who can we take out? Let's bushwhack. All right, looks like we don't have what it takes to live through it, though. Not doing good. All right, I'm playing against the man cob. The man cob, whatever that is. One, two, three, four. All right, let's go. Come on, man cob. I want to kick your booty. All right, how are we doing on... We need four black for the obliterator. We've only got three. At least whatever we need here is the deal. I go always bushwhack to get myself something, and we might just want to do that. Uh, that guy will do it for us, too. All right, I'll tell you what, we'll pay for this and put out the armored scrap gorger. Oh, that was ridiculous. I should have put out the solid green. I thought this was going to handle it. All right, let's see if you got what it takes. All right, I got a lot of bushwhacks and tail swipes. You are not going to like it. Ooh, destroy. All right, here's Gix. All right, we took care of that guy. We just got these little tiny dudes to worry about at this point. All right, Phyrexians, we need you to come out. Gix will help with that, I suspect. All right, let's let uh, our pal Shoulder clear the way. And let's send in our pal Gix. You can block with. Well, I'm just gonna chomp then. All right, good for you. If you like drawing cards, you could do it ten more times. I'll let you do it. You're going to you're going to do that forever. She's completely blocked from it. How incredible. Let's see what happens when they get in a fight though. Are you open back up for business then, children? Yeah.
All right, just take it. That's good for you. All right, I'm doing with that. Yes, it's, uh, take action. Uh, take action. Absolutely, take action. Yes. And there we go. Literator's back on the board. I don't have any fight spells. I'd waste them all, but you can still you can still fight. Who are you gonna copy? You guys let that happen uh yeah that sounds fine oh, i guess i already put out a land is that the deal uh, flooding the board is a really bad idea but i did it all right those are the enchantments i want to chew up Super Power Mind Link Mech! We're gonna become. You don't I don't know who you think you are. All right, that's it. We win. Victory. All right, we're playing against John's Bone. John's Bone Joan. John's Bone Joan. All right, we're cool. Two mana. Three, four. And I'm not a big happy fan about all this stuff. Got threes, fours. I'm going to keep it. I'm just guessing we can grow. I'll probably bushwhack to go get my other land. Black. Oh, these were set up for turn three, at least. All right, two points of life for us. What's this guy even do? Eternal land cards from graveyard to hand. I'm not sure I'm not like, concerned about it. Maybe I should have held on for a little bit. All right, I'll turn off some lights. Ah, well, that's a nice one. All right, Gix is in play. Number four is going to have to be Shouldred because we were mixing out on a fourth black. You really playing Dinosaur on me here? Wow, he's playing... The, he can't be playing Dinosaur. He's playing Simic. I've never seen Dinosaur Simic I can see him maybe putting one in, this pugnacious guy. But he's not going to be playing big-time dinosaur with blue. I could try to trick him into blocking Shouldred. All right, that's all I really need. Let's go for Rexian. Rexian Obliterator. <clears throat> and 
and now he's gonna give up. That's everything, dude. It's all gone. All right, welcome to the beginning, starting all over again. That was such a prime target. All right, he's he's about to potty pants it. There's no way he's going to continue to go from here. Maybe he'll just rope. All right, let's just settle in for our long winter's nap at this point. All right, we're back in the saddle again. Uh, I'm going for the rest. Here we go. Anyway, we kill him. I mean, he's going to take it as soon as he draws a card. All right, there we go. And we win. John's Bone Joan is a dirty roper. Victory. All right, we're playing against Marche 46. Or is it Marchy? I'm not quite sure. Keep. Hey, hello there, my friend Chomper. How are you doing on your sex wing? That was dumb. That was super dumb. I mean, I guess I... Rexian, Armor Scrap Gorger. Yes, I could have put out the Obliterator at this turn if I had just put out the Obliterator last turn. Oh, wait, I couldn't. I needed to get all the blacks out. That's what the wheel was. I was, trying, I was racing for that. If I would have had the green out, I couldn't have been able to put it out anyway. He knows I need the Armor Scrap Gorger. Turns out I didn't. My question, can he do enough damage to me straight up? All right, what are you going to give up? If you're smart, you kill your own dude right now. All right, you got to give up two of your lands, maybe, if you want to keep Felden around. Nothing. Dude, you cannot attack. Yep, there you go. Mono Red, you can suck it. Victory. All right, here we are with Frexian Tribal. You know what this deck reminds me of? I remember one of the lessons I learned a long time ago about magic cards. When you're building a deck, you need to build in multiple paths to victory. Multiple paths to victory. That's what you're always looking for. Not just one thing, right? Like, I'm going to put out a bunch of creatures and win. No, it's multiple paths, right? You're looking for those combos. You're looking for those twists. This deck has multiple paths. What am I talking about? Number one, I'm talking about Roaming Throne. The Roaming Throne with a bunch of Phyrexians, that is such a fantastic thing. When you get like Shouldred doing double time, you're gaining like twice as much life and they're losing twice as much life. That is so good. Glissa doing twice as much stuff. Gix doing twice as much stuff. Obliterator doing twice as much. Man, it is so good. The other thing is we have a lot of fight cards in here between Tail Swipe and Bushwhack. We got eight of those things and uh, Phyrexian Obliterator and fight spells is nasty. Nasty. It just goes on forever. So, um... I guess, what's the last path of victory there? Just the fact that we got Brexian Tribal. You know, even without Roaming Throne, I mean, they're not really great at helping each other out too much. Um, but still, we got Cavern of Souls and the Seed Core all helping you get out uh, Brexians with whatever mana colors you need. So nothing in there really hurts you too much. 
Plus, you got like Glissa, Herald of Predation, same Phyrexians you control, get first strike and death touch till the end of the turn. At the beginning of combat on your turn, that is so really good. All right, so anyways, yeah, I just feel like this thing has so much going for it, a lot of different utility. Uh, this is a great deck, and I really appreciate it. All right, so who was the MVP? Who was the most valuable player? It kind of depended on the situation. I mean, Shouldred is such a clutch card almost all the time. Same thing with Flex. The Phyrexian Obliterator is also super good, provided you have, you know, your fight cards with you. I mean, as just a pure defense, as long as they don't have flying, they are scared as hell to come after you. Glissa, with her ability to do first strike and death touch, is insane in both uh, defense and offense. So any of those cards are good. Um, what makes the deck that much better? What really ramps it up? It's going to be Roaming Throne. I think in this deck, Roaming Throne is the MVP card that once it comes out, everything gets so much better. Plus the fact that Roaming Throne has Ward 2 and is a 4-4. I mean, that is a great little defense you know, officer right there. Uh, the fact that it just makes everything else so much better. Big time, big time awesome. So I'm going to give the MVP to Roaming Throne. In a deck full of MVPs, Roaming Throne is pulling it out. So congratulations, Weird Artifact Spider statue. You are the MVP, and you are going to Disneyland. All right, let's see. Was this deck competitive? Let's see what my final numbers here. here. Uh, 67%. That meant that uh, two out of every three games we were winning with this deck. I played it uh, nine times. I won six, lost three. Mostly my problem was... Um, aggro or aggro red and then of course aggro boros red uh boros with a lot of aggro in it is too so that's i think the big problem yeah when they come at you so hard and fast and you're trying but i mean what can the scrap board reduce you're really waiting around to get to turn three before you can put anything out that's the big problem with this deck is that it is a mid game deck mid to late game and you're going nuts you can get out an obliterator on turn three yeah, uh, really, it's it's going to be four if you think about it. Just because you have to get a green out to get out the scrap gorger, um, and you need the scrap gorger. So yeah, it's, it seems like you still have to get out four. All right, yeah, I don't know. Maybe there seems like I could get it on turn three. But as long as you get scrap gorger, uh, this good obliterator out on four. You know, you got great defense at that point. You could just hold it back. People will be totally scared to come at you. Yeah, but aggro red's probably going to be your biggest enemy. So anyways, um, this thing got a 67% in my watch. Yeah, this is a competitive deck. I'd say that it's it's decent. I would it's Because it's a little slow against aggro, I'd say you're not going to be winning on the ramp. You're not taking this thing out. But just casual play, you know, even if you're playing at the Mythic Land, this deck's going to do a great job just playing around. I just don't think it's a ladder climber. I mean, you'll just have to see. I did great against Mono Red a couple of times. It's just, uh, yeah, there's a couple other games where that was not the case. All right, so um, was this deck fun? Absolutely. I love a good Phyrexian Tribal deck. I like it when they all tend to work together. I think the true Phyrexian Tribal I played with in the past was a little bit better. I think it had that Phyrexian Lord that gave everybody menace or something. That seemed even better somehow. Um, but uh, even without him, I mean, these guys are all, every one of these cards is so good. Gix, Glissa, Shouldred, Obliterator, Roaming Throne, other other Shouldred, and even the Mar Armored Scorp Grap Gorger, especially with this crew in a tribal deck, is so fantastic. So it's just great having all these guys showing up for the game. Um, it's like the all-star deck, practically. But still, yeah, they're, they're all fun. I like the bit of ramp we got going on in the beginning, in case we really desperately need to cut the colors we're looking for, working our way right into just getting those good Phyrexian guys out. All right, was this deck interesting? Yeah, yeah, totally it was. Why is it, do I find it interesting? Number one, it was Phyrexian Tribal. I love a good tribal deck. Anything that is tribal, it used to be, that was the third, it was a tribal, that's what I would say. In this case, it, it's, it's interesting, and a tribal deck is always good for me. But secondly, we also got it as a fight deck, right, with Obliterator and fight spells. So that's number two that's got going for it. Lastly, number three, Roaming Throne comes in. Now, you don't have to, I mean, all the tribal decks I've done Phyrexian Blast, no Roaming Throne. So seeing Roaming Throne in the mix made it that much more interesting. Doubling up on all the effects that the Phyrexians were capable of doing, yes, that was fantastic. I was really waiting to see how that was going to work and how well these things came together. Turned out fantastically. 
So uh, yeah, let's add that up. Was this deck competitive? Yes. Was it fun? Totally. Was it interesting? You betcha. So that makes this into an A-plus deck. And as I'm required by federal law to say, this deck is so choice. I would highly recommend you pick one up, should you have the means. All right, that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. From all of us here in the secret underground headquarters of Uncommonly Good MTG, have a great day. See you next time, Space Cowboys. Later.